In this problem we will talk about a linear combination of two normally distributed random variables. So we start out the problem with these two random variables x and y. Both of them are normally distributed with different um, parameters, right? Uh, x has an expected value of 20 and a variance of 5. Y has an expected value of 30 and a variance of 11. Importantly, we also know that the two of them are independent, or we are being told that they are independent from just that information. You can't tell that. So that is important extra information. Now we are thinking of a third random variable, which is constructed by taking the difference of x minus y. And the task is now to figure out what is the expected value of that new random variable d and what is the variance of that new random variable d. This is the problem at hand. So we know how to combine and how to calculate these things if we know that d is a linear combination of x and y. And indeed it is here. And to simplify our thinking, our calculations, it's perhaps better best to see what are the coefficients here. d is equal to 1 times x plus negative 1 times y. And if you want to include a constant plus zero, if you want to revert back to our sort of canonical uh, form, linear combination form. So with this information, so this is of the form d is equal to ax plus by plus c. Okay, where a is 1, b is negative 1, and c is 0. Well, once we recognize that, things are fairly straightforward because we know that the expected value of d is just the same linear combination. So that is equal to a times the expected value of x plus b times the expected value of y plus c. And in our particular case, that means it's expected value of x, because we have a 1 here, minus the expected value of y, because we have a minus 1 for the b and the c is 0. And in our case, that will be expected value of x is 20 minus the expected value of y, which is 30. So that random variable d has an expected value of negative 10. So let's move on to the variance, the variance of d. Now, first stating the generic form of the variance calculation is as follows. We are having a squared times the variance of x plus b squared times the variance of y plus 2a times b times the covariance between x and y. So that is the generic formula to calculate the variance of a linear combination of two random variables, regardless whether they are normally distributed or not. That formula is valid always. Now, we have everything here. We know what a squared is. a is 1, so a squared is also 1, so it's just times 1 times the variance of x plus b squared, well b is negative 1, negative 1 squared is also 1, 1 times the variance of y. But what about the covariance between x and y? We're not given that information, however, we're given the information that x and y are independent, and that means there's also no linear dependence and that means the covariance between x and y is equal to zero. So that third term falls away. All we are left with is the variance of x, which is 5, plus the variance of y, which is 11. So that is 16. So we now know 
that d is distributed as a random variable. It has expected value of negative 10 and a variance of 16. Now, the one extra thing we know due to the fact that both of these variables are normally distributed is that d, as it is a linear combination of two normally distributed random variables, is also normally distributed with these particular, with that mean of negative 10 and variance of 16. That result only follows because x and y are normally distributed. Up to this point here, this calculation of the expected value and the variance of d was generic. That would have worked regardless of x and y being normally distributed or not. But that last result here, this result here, depended on the normal distribution. So now the follow-up question is, what is the probability that d takes a value larger than zero? So recall that to calculate these probabilities is usually useful to do a little sketch. So we're having a random variable d which is normally distributed and if we want to calculate probabilities for normal distribution we know that we need to translate that into the standard normal into the set world. This normal distribution here has a mean of negative 10 and we are asking what is the probability that d is larger than zero. So zero relative to negative 10 is somewhere here on the right. Let me just draw that here. It doesn't really matter where exactly it is. But we now know that the probability we are after is this one, because that is the probability that d is larger than zero. And we want to know how big that is. As we do not have a table for that particular normal distribution, we will have to translate that problem into a standard normal distribution, which has a mean of zero. And that means we need to see what value does this translate to? What value set does that zero translate to? So we use our translation formula, zero minus the mean of the distribution. The mean is negative 10, so minus minus 10. Be careful with the minus signs here divided by the standard deviation, the variance is 16, so the standard deviation is four. So we get a value of 10 divided by four, which is 2.5. So this value here is 2.5. So now we can go to the normal distribution table to figure out how large this area is. So that's the probability that z is larger than 2.5 and the important thing to understand is that these two probabilities are the same. So now we go to, so this is the same as the probability that z is larger than 2.5. As we go to the normal distribution table we of course recognize that we, what we get is the size of this probability, which is the probability that z is smaller or equal to 2.5. And to get the red probability, what we need to do is we have to subtract that from 1. So let's go to the normal distribution table. So here's a normal distribution table. We need to make it a little bit bigger we find the value of 2.5. It's down here and we are looking at a value of exactly 2.5. So the probability we read off here is 0.9938. So 0.9938 is this probability and that means that the probability we are after is 0.0062. So the size of this red probability is actually very small.
it is about half a percent, 0 0.0062.